Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel, Restaurant Recipe Recreations. This channel is dedicated in teaching you how to create your favorite signature dishes from the most popular restaurants. And I think this is gonna be kind of a funny episode because I've got like a lot of juice stored up in the tank. I have uh, quite a few funny stories to tell you and some funny anecdotes. So, I don't know, maybe you think it's funny, maybe you don't. And it looks like I'm just sort of hanging out in a garden here, but that is appropriate because in this episode, I'm going to teach you how to recreate the best gazpacho in the world. And it comes from the restaurant Charlie's Crab. Now, if you're unfamiliar with gazpacho, let me first explain what gazpacho is, and then I'll tell you a little bit about the restaurant Charlie's Crab. Gazpacho is a chilled tomato-based vegetable soup that originated in Spain. So it's chock full of diced vegetables, onions, peppers, garlic, cucumber, basil, all in a tomato base. And then I'm going to finish it with a little dollop of sour cream, some croutons, and it's like eating a salad, but in a soup form, and it's just delicious. So in 1964, a gentleman named Chuck Muir started the Charlie's Crab family of restaurants. Uh, they originated in Detroit and then they sort of migrated to the Florida area and they became very popular in Palm Beach and Sarasota. And then very sadly and tragically, he ended up uh, being lost at sea in 1993, he and his wife on the way home from Bahamas in what was considered kind of an unnamed storm at the time. And that's obviously not the funny aspects of this video that I had in mind, but I do think that it's interesting. It's kind of widely known and it lends itself to the history of this restaurant chain. And then for years after he and his wife disappeared, his seven children carried on the legacy of these Charlie Crab restaurants. But then eventually they were sold either to the Landry's Corporation or franchise owner and independent restaurant owners came in and purchased the restaurants and either kept the concept or changed the name or what have you. I live in Sarasota, Florida, so I know that in Sarasota, a local family purchased the Charlie's Crab, which can be found on St. Armand's Circle. They did end up changing the name, but they really did keep a lot of the integrity of the original Chuck Muir concept. And so even to this day, you can find a lot of the original recipes on the menu at this particular location. And one of those things that you can find is the gazpacho because it's just that darn good. So when I graduated from college and moved to Florida, although I'm not going to tell you what year that was, my very first job straight out of college was waiting tables at Charlie's Crab on St. Armand's Circle. And it was a blast. It's a fantastic restaurant that is very popular with the tourists, but it's also very popular with the celebrities. At that restaurant, I've waited on Kevin Bacon and Kira Sedgwick. I've waited on Terry Garr. I've waited on Brian Johnson, the lead singer from ACDC. I've waited on Kathy Moriarty, who is the nicest person in the world and a fantastic tipper, by the way. And so I worked there for several months until I was fired. <laughs> and it was the first and only job I'd ever been fired from. And they told me that the reason that they fired me was because my shirt was wrinkly. But I suspect that that wasn't really the real reason that they fired me. <laughs> I think probably it had something to do with my attitude, if I had to guess. Um, but maybe they were just trying to be nice and tell me that it was because my shirt was wrinkly. But <laughs> anyways, lessons learned. And I never ever held a grudge because it's still to this day one of my favorite restaurants of all time. In fact, it's where my husband and I went 125 years ago on our first date. And we still use it to entertain guests and we still use it for special celebrations. And I just love it. And I love their gazpacho. So let's go ahead. I'm gonna show you how to do Charlie's Crab Gazpacho. If you love gazpacho, trust me y'all, this is gonna be your favorite version of it in your lifetime. There's a secret ingredient that I'm gonna put in it that they put in it that I'll tell you about and it's like top secret, totally top secret. Um, and if you've never had gazpacho before, give this a try. Seriously, it is fantastic. So let's go ahead and get started. Really, it's just chopping and dicing. There's no cooking involved. So I'm just gonna stay right here on camera with you and I'm just gonna show you how to just basically put all the ingredients together and in the appropriate amounts. All right, so let me move all this aside. You wanna get yourself a big, big mixing bowl. Fired for a wrinkly shirt. I don't think so. 
They were just trying to be nice, right? So we're gonna go ahead and get started with one very, very large English cucumber. The English cucumbers have less seeds in them, which is why I prefer to use them. And a little trick that I like to do with my cucumber is I don't peel it all the way. I peel it like half of the way because I don't necessarily want all the peel, but I do like the crunch that the peel offers. So when I peel my cucumbers, I always leave like half of the skin on, maybe a little less than half of the skin. So I just do like one big swipe there and then I give it a little twist, another big swipe there. So you see, I'm leaving just like a little bit of the skin on because the skin is nutritious. It does give you some crunch, but not too much crunch. So while I'm doing this, I'd like to tell you about the interesting week that I had last week. Speaking of very large English cucumbers. <laughs> so my channel launched about eight weeks ago. And last week I developed several of what I call, shall we call them super fans. And these several super fans that I've accumulated are sliding into my DMs and leaving, maybe I'll describe them as descriptive photographs. I think you know where I'm going with that. And I didn't know whether or not I was going to say something about it, but I feel like I'm starting to get to know my subscribers and my fans because you're all leaving great comments. And I do think that one of the reasons that you like this channel is because of my personality. So I thought, what the heck? I'm gonna go ahead and use this as a platform to say, men, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. I don't know why you think that women are compelled by that, but they're not. They're just not. <laughs> do you think I'm gonna respond back with, I don't know what you think I'm gonna respond back with. I hope that I can save some of you out there from making a future mistake. All right, anyways, let's get back to the gazpacho. <laughs> The other thing that I like to do with cucumbers is I like to remove all of the seeds um, because the seeds, I don't know, I just, I don't like the consistency of the seeds and the seeds are the, what have a tendency to make the soup like watery because the seeds break down and make it a little bit mushy. So I always go ahead and just scrape out all of the seeds just using a spoon and all I want is that nice firm cucumber flesh. By the way, you're going to want to get a very, very big bowl um, because this does make kind of a lot of soup. But if you want to make less soup, then just cut everything down by half. But I just feel like when I make it, I'm, I go ahead and make a big batch because I, I really do enjoy it that much. And then sometimes I just even share it with some of my, my friends. And then we're just going to take this English cucumber and we're going to dice it. Now we're just going to do one large green bell pepper in a very small dice. All of the veg that you're going to put into this will have a very small dice to it. If you're paying attention, you realize that I switched out my cutting board. I just wanted a little bit more surface area. So if you caught that, then yay you, you're very observant. Next, we're going to do one medium-sized onion, yellow onion diced. Now I have about a cup of flat leaf Italian parsley. We're gonna chop this, but I just always take out like some of the bigger, tougher stems. All right, now we're gonna chop the parsley. You really want this to be a very nice, fine chop. Now I'm gonna add two tablespoons of fresh julienne basil. The best way to julienne basil is to take each individual leaf and sort of stack it one on top of the next. And then you take the whole stack and you just roll it into like a little roulade and then thinly slice it that way. Now I have two large cloves of fresh garlic grated. Okay, we're almost done. Now we're going to add four cups of V8 tomato juice use low sodium if you prefer one 14 ounce can of diced tomatoes with the juice included and so remember i mentioned earlier that secret ingredient this is it wishbone italian dressing and it has to be the actual wishbone brand that is what makes all the difference in this and it's what makes this gazpacho literally out of this world when you think about it really this is all stuff that goes into a salad and you're basically just putting salad dressing into the salad. So we're gonna add one and a half cups of wishbone Italian dressing. Make sure you give it a nice shake first. Add some cracked black pepper. But don't add any salt to it until you've tasted it. I personally will not add salt to mine uh, because there is sodium in the tomato juice, especially if you don't use the low sodium version. And there is salt obviously in the wishbone dressing. So I'm not gonna add salt to mine. But taste it. If you feel like it needs salt, that's fine. Go ahead and give it a nice stir. You're going to cover it, stick it in the refrigerator, and serve it when it's very, very well chilled. I would give it about at least an hour. But I'm going to show you even how they serve it at Charlie's Crab. 
Okay, so the only thing left to do is to serve this. I've got myself a two ounce ladle. Get yourself um, a pretty dish, a pretty bowl. I happen to be using kind of like a wine glass because I just think it looks nice. And you're gonna go ahead and fill up your, whatever you happen to be using. And then you drizzle the top with a little bit of sour cream or creme fraiche, this happens to be creme fraiche. So you just drizzle the top with a little bit of the sour cream. This is all optional by the way, but this is how they serve it at Charlie's Crab. And this is how I like to eat it. Put some fresh homemade croutons on top. Of course they're homemade, right? Like I'm buying store-bought croutons. And then the final thing is to stick a spear of the fresh English cucumber right on the top. And there you are. That is Charlie's Crab Gazpacho. Let's give her a little taste. <laughs> God, I love this soup. This may be one of my favorite soups in the entire world. I will tell you that I've had the pleasure at working at some of the most amazing restaurants. And that's where I get so much of my knowledge, my food knowledge. And I'm happier for it, I can say that. I hope you like this episode, everybody. I hope you like all of my episodes. You can follow me on Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram, and Twitter. That way you'll know of my upcoming episodes. You can also hit the notification button. Go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button while you're at it, if you think that this channel is entertaining. But if you do think that it's bringing you some value and you're learning how to recreate restaurant dishes right in your very own home. Until I see you again, everybody, have an awesome, awesome day. Thank you so much for watching. Love y'all and cheers.